Thanks for joining me again on our channel, JD Crafts and Entertainment. We are on our final video of the raised koi pond build. I want to make this pond simple without having to buy external filtration systems for hundreds of dollars with extensive plumbing and complicated cleaning procedures. In the last video, we successfully leak tested the pond. Now to the decorative facade. This actually was the first time I worked with culture stone facade or a wet saw. I found a wet saw for about $100 at Home Depot that served my purpose. The decorative build was almost one third the total cost of the pond build. So you can do it much cheaper with paint and plywood. I found another picture showing the hollow side wall construction. Due to the post structure, I could not put the stone directly on the side as it did on the ends. This actually worked out well since it allowed me to put sealed towering tiles on top. It gave the top a very finished modern look. Because the distance between the posts were 6 feet apart, I had to support a wall with two extra studs in between as seen on the top right. I am sure I had to watch a few YouTube videos to be confident enough to install the stone facade. I laid the stonework out on the ground first to get a feeling of the final pattern. The waterfall area actually took a little longer because the two end posts had many small cuts. I used as many full pieces as possible to reduce cutting time. I did the ends and posts last so I could cut the scrap stone pieces to fit. For the wall, I started one corner using scrap wood to make a low foundation for the stone to rest on. It was actually very easy to install after having experience with the waterfall. More than half the time was spent on cutting and matching pieces. For the top seal, I bought 8 inch by 6 inch sealed travertine tiles. As always, I did a dry run first to plan the cuts and prevent problems during insulation. It was a simple tile insulation, but it still took all day. The waterfall was the toughest to build. I had never made a waterfall spillway from scratch before. It looked simple enough, but I looked for pre-made spillways to speed up the build process. I could not find anything that was big enough or it was more decorative than functional. I did many test runs with different materials and depths for the ledge. I just filled the waterfall area using a water hose to visualize the runoff. I finalized the design by using a ceramic floor tile that was 24 inches wide and 6 inches deep as the base for the spillway. I used two towering scraps for the sides. Another challenge was leakage from the waterfall liner and the spillway. I heavily sealed all seams with fish safe silicone many times to stop leakage. This was my first design for the waterfall filter. In my later videos, I will go over the different DIY filter revisions since then. For my first build, I had flexible 1.5 inch PVC tubing that it made 1 quarter inch holes about every 2 inches. The water inlet was in the center, so I spaced most of the holes toward the ends. I used basket made for pond plants to sit on top of the submerged pipes. I filled the basket with hydroponic pebbles as filter media. I also made a 1 inch drain outlet in the waterfall filter. This allowed for easy drainage for future media cleanings. Finally, I was ready to fill the pond all the way up. I set 18 inch by 18 inch travertine step stones to enhance the main sitting area. I put polished pebble in between the step stones. I also made an overflow outlet and aquaponics return that you can see on the far left of the pond in white. I made a diagram of the simple plumbing and the major components. If you remember, all the components are below the water line. There is no need to prime the pump when turning on since water naturally fills it up. This pond had many revisions mostly of the filtration system over the years. 
I will get into that in future videos. I left the pond running after seeding the filter for over a month. I used the API fresh water test kit to monitor pH, ammonia, nitrate, and nitrite levels. Luckily, everything worked out well with no leaks. It was in early spring that year by the end of February. With ammonia and nitrite levels at zero again, the pond was ready for fish. Thank you for watching this three-part video. I hope you enjoyed them. Please subscribe if you haven't done yet. Check out our other koi videos. When it gets warmer, we will upload the five-year update of our koi.